So in this video, we're going to be talking about multiplying fractions. We have a longer video already in our module that has explanations for simplifying fractions, multiplying, adding, subtracting. And this is just an extra resource discussing multiplying fractions. Um, the, your book does start out by talking about, uh, you know, like a visual of showing how fractions work with blocks. And so let me use an example from the You Try It section on page 249. It says, create a visual argument showing that one half of one quarter is one over eight. So if you have four boxes, right, and this is a quarter right here. Okay, now at the end of the day, they do want us to show again that one half of one quarter is one eighth. So I would actually prefer to have eight boxes, okay? So if I have eight boxes, because that's what I would need at the end of the day, but keep in mind, I have eight boxes, and one quarter, so they said one half, so that would be exactly half of, right? Uh, but keep in mind that one over four is the same thing, right? If I was to multiply this by two and multiply this by two, it's the same thing as two over eight, okay? So if I have eight boxes and two over eight of the boxes represent a quarter of this total um, uh, image here. So one quarter is this much with the red. But if I say one half of one quarter, that means I need to take half of that quarter, right? So this is half of the red portion that was shaded. This blue now is one out of eight total, right? It's one out of the total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's one over eight. So notice that the blue, right, is 1 over 8 of the total. And so that's how we show that 1 half of a quarter, so this was a quarter, I'm going to use green to show, so this was a quarter where the green is, and we took a half of it, and basically it became an eighth of the whole shape. Now if we did that mathematically, 1 half, of one fourth, it would be one over eight because the numerators will multiply together and the denominators will multiply together, giving me that eight in the denominator. So that's how I create that argument. One way that I would recommend uh, creating the argument sometimes is drawing all the boxes that you would need to account for at the end of the day. So that is one example just showing the shading. Um, it's a skill that you would need to work on for just a couple problems, number one and number three. And your book does provide you with those detail, uh, detailed answers if you need, need them. So we have, um, and you can use the detailed answers to, again, look at how we set it up. Let me know if you have any questions on shading, but it's just a good visual. So when we're multiplying fractions, we don't care about the denominators being uh, the same, right? If you're doing, if you're adding or subtracting, then you need to have a common denominator. But if you're multiplying, it doesn't matter. So if you have a problem like negative 3 over 7 times 2 over 5, you just multiply the numerator and you multiply the denominators. So negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, and then 7 times 5 is 35. And so that's what you would get when you do negative 3 over 7 times 2 over 5. You get negative 6 over 35. Now, notice that the rules of integers will apply the same with fractions. It will work out the same way. Um, and then, yeah, we can, we can look at more examples. Your book gives you more examples for multiplying. And remember that it is okay if you have 2. So, so let's say you have 2 over 7 times 14 over, uh, let's say, 20. You are allowed... This 7 goes into 14 two times. So you are allowed to simplify before you multiply if you choose to do so. And this 2 goes into 20 10 times. So we have, I'm going to rewrite this 2 here. So we have 2 here. So 2 goes into 20 10 times, right? So 20 divided by 2 is 10. And 14 divided by 7 is 2. So technically we have 2 over 10, which can be simplified further. And the answer is 1 over 5. So you can choose to multiply the 2 times 14 so that would be 28, and the 7 times 20, that would be 140, and then you just have to simplify, right? So you can choose to go this route, or you can choose to simplify first before you multiply. I discussed some of this in my longer video. Let me know which one you prefer, and then, um, but I want to encourage you to make sure you're comfortable with both, but then I'm curious to know which one you do prefer working uh, 
with these fraction multiplications? Do you prefer simplifying before you multiply? Or would you rather just multiply the numerators together, multiply the denominators together, and then simplify later? Uh, be interesting to see what different people think about this. As we wrap up this section with fraction multiplication, um, they give you examples of finding the area of shapes, right? You can use this skill in finding the area of shapes, such as the area of a triangle, which is one-half base times height, or the area of a trapezoid, which is one-half base one plus base two times height. So that's the area of a trapezoid. And you just plug in the values for each of these when you're solving these problems. So, for example, if they tell us the base of a triangle measures 14 meters, if the base is 14 and the height is 10, what is the area of the triangle? We would say A is equal to one-half base, which is 14, times height, which is 10. So 14 is the same as 14 over 1. 10 is the same as 10 over 1. So basically, 2 goes into 10 five times. And then you basically multiply them now. It would be 14 times 5 that is left. Now, you could have multiplied the numerators, and you would have gotten 140, and then you'd have to divide that by 2. Or you can simplify right away. 2 goes into 10 five times, and the answer to this would be 70. So that's one way we can handle this problem. So I encourage you to look at you know the examples they have for you, and then there's a lot of good practice problems. Um, the ones that involve... Uh, variables don't don't allow them you know to concern you use the same principle you learned from the previous uh, section so you have a situation like number 46 where it's 16 X cubed divided by 13 Y to the fourth times 11 Y squared over 18 X so basically in this case the numerator can multiply all through and the denominator can multiply all through right so it's 16 times 11 times X cubed times Y squared and the denominator, you have 13 times 18, and then you have y to the fourth and x. So I put the letters at the end, and that's okay because of the commutative property of addition. So, uh, uh, commutative property of multiplication, I apologize. But it's the same idea with addition and multiplication. When you have those in your, uh, um, your problem, you can move things around. So the x here, I can actually put it where the y is. So it's like 16 times 11 times x cubed times y squared divided by 13 times 18 times x times y to the fourth. So the x here and the x here, right, we can write it all out. And actually, let's go ahead and prime factorize as we write it all out. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times x times x times x times y times y divided by 13 is a prime number. And then 2 times 3 times 3 times x times y times y times y times y. So the y's will cancel, the x will cancel one of those, and then this 2 will cancel that 2. So now we basically put down what is left in the numerator and what is left in the denominator. So what's left in the numerator? 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8, and then you have these 2, so that's 8x squared. And then here you have 13, and you have these 2, and the y squared there. So you're going to have y squared over there, and then that will be... 117 for 13 times 9. So basically, we have 8x squared divided by 117y squared. So notice that you prime factorize the numbers, and um, depending, of course, this is prime, so we couldn't prime factorize 13, but you prime factorize the numbers that you can, right? There's some of the others that you cannot prime factorize either. And I apologize, I actually forgot my 11. <laughs> I apologize, I did not put that earlier from here. So you can see that even though I've done math for many years of my life, I sometimes, uh, you know, we can forget to carry over a number. So that is my mistake. I apologize. And I'm going to update our answer because we actually have an 11. I just caught it here now. It's over there. It's over there. And now it's over here, right? So 11. So that's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and then the 11. So that means when we have 2 times 2 times 2, that's 8 times 11. So that's 88, and then x squared divided by, we had 117y squared. So now we are good to go. So remember, prime factorize, factorize and then simplify when you multiply. So let me know if you have any questions. Um, I encourage you to check out number 1 to 69, you know, the odd problems. And please email me if you have any questions. Have a great day.